Well, good morning. It is Friday, and that means it's time for Bobcat Central with uh, Ashley Washburn. Uh, interesting week. Uh, Moorhead State rolls into town. Bobcats put a few points on the board, but uh, had to deal with a, a kind of an odd situation on the, uh, the offense side. Let's talk about that, actually. Yeah, well, if we're going to talk about the deficit, if you bet the over, you definitely won <laughs> on no, that No question one. about that. Yeah. Uh, offensively, right off the bat, I think Tommy Malat, we saw him emerge as a pocket passer a little bit more. It was great to see. You know, we, he know, we know he can run the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, passing was definitely an emphasis this offseason, and we saw it on Saturday. Uh, I believe he was 16 of 22 completions, 260-plus yards, two touchdowns, new career high. So it was great to see him emerge on that level, and we're definitely going to need to see that come Saturday but on the latter we also got to see Sean Chambers what he could do on the ground which definitely added an element rushed for over 100 yards was a top rusher on Saturday and you know talking about that funky offense we really might not need to see that on Saturday especially with what's happening in that running back room I mean it's crazy to think going into the season we already knew we were missing Isaiah that's why they brought in Kagan Williams it's officially ruled that he is out for the entire season because of his neck injury mm -hmm. so then that promoted Lane Sumner that starting position he had a great great week one game somehow got injured in between that week one week two which is why he missed it promoted Jared White he got hurt on his first carry so now you're down your four top backs which is an insane situation only being two weeks into the season yeah we talked about that a couple of weeks ago when we when they first came out with the uh, the 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 sheet everything was going to order and you talked about the fact that they're going to be using some different numbers in that well your prophecy was you, even you couldn't go as deep as we had to do. That's a situation you don't want to have to deal with game two on the year. Well, and that's, I think, the crazy part is the big emphasis this offseason was the running back depth. Right. We saw what happened in that national championship. They did the work. They mm -hmm. brought an entire running back room that they felt, you know, this this will get us through a season not knowing that they would be down four in a matter of two games. And they're mm -hmm. getting ready to play against a really tough team in Oregon State mm -hmm. in an FBS program. So, you know, you hope Elijah Elliott, he'll get that start. And, you know, he has he's only had five carries this season so far but you have to look at last season he was the team's third leading rusher right behind Tommy Mullot so he can make some noise you just hope he'll be able to make noise this Saturday. Well and on the defensive side of the ball let's look at that uh, those numbers don't look too bad either right? not, no. not a bad game at all yeah that, they're a, really starting to click together. Well and the first guy that stands out to me is Sebastian Valdez I believe mm -hmm. five and a half sacks through two games he's definitely emerged as a playmaker on that defensive line which is what that young defensive line needed mm -hmm. but then you have to look at the takeaways they've had five in two games which is great to see because you're going to definitely want to see that on Saturday the only thing that is kind of negative to see is the actual turnover margin they've had five takeaways but they've also so had five turnovers on the offensive mm -hmm. side of the ball, which is why ball protection has been so huge. And, you know, I asked Vegan that question on Monday of, you know, how important is winning that turnover margin against Oregon State? And he said, you have to win it because if you don't, you're probably not going to end on that winning side come mm -hmm. Saturday. Yeah, let's talk about that. Uh, different, different kind of game coming up. Uh, first road game of the season, mm -hmm. number one. But you're playing a different team than Moorhead State or McNeese State. Yeah, let's set the scene a little bit. They're actually playing in Portland. They're going to mm -hmm. play at Providence Park. Oregon State hasn't played there since the 80s, but Greg Walls in the booth was telling me that Montana State has played mm -hmm. there in recent playing against Portland State. And so it is a little bit more of a neutral side. And there's a lot of Bobcat fans in that area, but you can't overlook Oregon State. No. They're under a new head coach and Coach Smith. He actually has some big sky experience. He spent some time at Montana and then put his feet back into the Pac-12 and worked in the head coaching position, former Beaver quarterback, actually. And he's really taken that ground from the ground up. Mm -hmm. um, they were, it was very struggling when he was in there in recent years. They've gotten a lot better. They made it to a bowl game last year. They're projected finish top in the Pac-12 this year, so you can't overlook them. Um, you know, looking at their offense really quick, if you're familiar, if you watched their game last week, they had a really program-defining win at against Fresno State at Fresno. They haven't won there ever in a non-conference game, and it all came down to one final play. There was like two, three seconds left on the clock. They could either kick a field goal, tie it, and go to overtime, or they do the gutsy call and just decide to run a play, which is what they did. Mm -hmm. Jack Coletta, who's their Swiss Army knife, punched it in, and they ended up winning that game on the road. That's a fantastic, uh, as I see it, I'm looking at the schedule just as it is. Uh, this has been incrementally the way you'd like it to go. I mean, things happen, in injuries and things like that, but incrementally you go from McNeese State to Moorhead State to Oregon State. You're, you're, you're stepping it up a notch every week. Uh, Cats ready for that? You've, you've been watching them now for two. They ready for that next level? I think they are. I think, you know, that was the big thing is, you're, the biggest thing you'll see in a college football season is that progression from week one to week mm -hmm. two 
really dictates the season. And you saw the progression that Montana State made in this week two game. But you also can't overlook that they were playing McNeese State and Moorhead State. No knock to them, but no. they're not an Oregon State. Mm -hmm. So I think the progression helped on that side. And Vegan kind of said this, you know, if we started at Oregon State and then went to those two FCS programs, it wouldn't have been as great of a progression going right into Big Sky play. So I think they're ready for it. And I think what will be interesting, and we were kind of joking about this, this could be a trap game for mm -hmm. Oregon State. They're coming off this program defining win. But if you look ahead on their schedule, they're playing number 12 USC with a potential college game day in the books as well. So, you know, they could fairly well be looking over Montana State, but their head coach did say this week an impressor of you can't overlook this program, especially when you have four kids that are playing on NFL rosters. Uh, they're coming off a trip to the national championship. And just because you're hearing new names on this team, like Sebastian Valdez, you're seeing what he's doing on the field. Right. And you don't even know where this ceiling is yet for this team. So you can't overlook Montana State, but you also can't overlook Oregon State either. And you got to win on the road. You got to win on the road. Thankfully, they're playing important. And I hear that the, there's going to be a lot of Bobcat fans there. So you really hope that they'll <laughs> be able to use that home field advantage, so to say. So it should be a fun one in Providence Park. That's for sure. We'll see how it all goes. Yeah. Uh, Ashley Washburn joining us uh, for Bobcat Central, as uh, we, she does every week. Appreciate that. Uh, we'll talk about the, the big the sky play next week. Big sky play. That uh, will be our topic next week. Ashley, thank you very much. If you're watching Montana this morning. We're back right after this.